but right now it is my very great privilege to introduce you to the inimitable Astarius Miraculi, who does the most kick-ass sound healing ever. I'm excited I'm going to get off the stage and let him do his thing. Thank you so much. Bless it, beloved. How's all the beloveds doing? Oh, you all do even more than that. I know rigor mortis didn't set in. How you feeling? And I want you to give my heart something extra to throb about. You know, that's important to give your heart something extra to throb about, too. So maybe uh, working with you in the resonance of the ascension and in the resonance of manifestation. How many have heard of manifestation? Very few hands. How many have heard of manifestation? <laughs> so we are all really hot for becoming manifestors. Yes? Yes. We want to manifest, you know, all of the great abundance that we want. And that's really important. I'm going to turn my phone off. It's full timber. Like get in in this moment when I'm doing my thing. To get in there. <laughs> So, femifestation is connected to the primordial first cause. Femifestation is connected to the realm of creation. Everything that will ever be created has already been created. Though it's not necessarily in a state of manifestation. Creation exists in the womb of the universe. The womb of the universe. That is the realm of femifestation. I've been given this download on femifestation. It started coming in very powerfully last June or so. And it's been the most amazing experience for me. So I'm going to open this up by sharing with you the poem that I wrote. I guess it's my most recent poem, really. And it really offers the download on femifestation. Mm. Femifestation. Womb of creation. Primordial cause of manifestation. Manifestation, the second coming of reality, is born of emotion in its totality. Thoughts and feelings create all forms and blessings thrive before they are born. So through great prior appreciation, flood your life with manifestations. Femifestation is eternal, a never-ending form, less stream of life. If manifestation is your only thrill, you're in the grips of fear and strife. Forms will come and forms will go. This is a truth that we all know. And all things of time and space at some point will be erased. Faith is the substance of all desires, the evidence of that which is not seen. So celebrate the unseen goodness and all the miracles and the riches of form are then yours to redeem. When the miracles of your life are still sleeping in the void, skyrocket your gratitude and they come leaping from the void. You are pregnant with every blessing that will ever come to be. An embryo within your soul, though human eyes have yet to see. So see with the eye of mind and heart into infinite realms of the great unseen. Choose wonderful feelings without concrete reasons. 
and all the riches of the kingdom are now yours to redeem. The manifestation. Womb of creation. Primordial cause of manifestation. So what is it that you want to manifest, beloved? What do you require in your life? You know, is it a relationship? You want to get juicy with it? Is it a home? You want to live in it? Car, you want to ride in it? Whatever it is that you are wanting to bring into manifestation in order to accelerate the crystallization of that blessing that you're calling for, you must first be in the appreciation of the manifestation of that reality, which is that reality which exists in the intangible realm of creation, the womb of creation. It already is. What's lacking is appreciation and gratitude. We in the human experience often wait for things to come into the manifest realm before we're in a state of appreciation for them. See, it's not a matter that all of the outer wonderful things are meant to produce the good feelings that we feel. Yes, they can offer to those feelings, but it is meant to be that the feelings and the thought and the vision is meant to create those things. So feel the feeling first. See the vision first. See what is needed that your prayer might be heeded. See it as though you've already succeeded. Feel what is needed that your prayer might be heeded. Feel it as though you've already succeeded. Have faith in advance. Let good be left not to chance. For if faith be postdated, then your blessings are belated. And when you're good, you detain the whole world bears the strain. Invoke the spirit of fire, purge the enemy of your desire, and make the wise decision to maximize your vision. carries the entire genetic blueprint of your whole body. 
That's how they do cloning. One little piece of DNA from anywhere within the body and recreate the whole body. So likewise, you are a soul, a cell in the body of the universe. The universe is a cell in the body of your soul. If the blueprint for the universe was lost, it could be recreated through any one of us. That's how powerful you are. You are the personification of the universe. What is your soul? What is your body? It's simply the meeting place for the whole universe that you are. Time to stop playing small. No more renting with option to buy. You own who you are. No more renting with option to buy. Own your soul. Own your love. Own your joy. Even if something recently pissed you off and thrown you off center, in this moment, because here we are together, and each of us our own version of the whole universe, we can dissolve that pissed off ism into nothingness. It doesn't matter about the trials and tribulations. They're meant to be servant unto you, not master over you. How do you get your trials to serve you? First, you stop fighting with them. Everything you bless will bless you back. Everything you curse will curse you back. Better bless it all and take no slack. <laughs> so one of the great analogies that I like to use is the analogy of fertilizer. What is fertilizer? Glorified shit. Is it not? And it truly is glorified. Because we take this fertilizer, which is essentially waste, and we put it on the ground, and the soil yields richer crops. Not in spite of the waste, but because of the waste. So the soil of your soul can yield richer crops and richer life experiences, not in spite of your trials and tribulations, but because of your trials and tribulations. Recognize the way in which your trials and tribulations are sacred allies. So let's look at what the soil did. You know, we can get a great, you know, teaching and a learning from the soil. So when they put the fertilizer on the soil, did the soil say, oh man, you dumped shit on me. The soil didn't say that, did it? No. The soil engaged in the sacred alchemy and took that glorified shit and bore something so amazingly wonderful. The sweetest, richest vegetables that we could ever eat came from that which was dumped on by fertilizer. Therefore, it is wise not to despise it, use that shit to fertilize it, for life's greatest connoisseur gets the best crops from the best manure. <laughs> so that's how I encourage you to look at your life. No matter what your difficulties are, if you go to the center of your pain, you're gonna find the light you go to the center of your despair, you're going to find the light. Go to the center of your worry, you'll find the light. Why? Because the light owns the center of everything. The only space in the whole of the universe that can never be contaminated is the center. And we are never without center. Sometimes consciousness strays way away from the center. But even when that happens, the center is still there, standing in the circle of eternity, holding space for what you've forgotten when you enter the nightmare of the earth dream. The centered reality of selfhood. That's what the angels are. When we came into this human experience, we knew we were probably going to forget. You know, I mean, that was part of the plan. This is a sacred experiment. We came into physicality in order to give God, God is absolute, the gift of personification. That's the gift that we give to God, God is absolute. God, God is absolute would not know personification without us. 
as we would not know absoluteness without God goddess in the absolute sense. So I want you to really feel that. I have given God goddess absolute the gift of personification. And the universe cannot personify itself in exactly the same way that it personifies itself in you and any other person. The expansion of the universe is at the mercy of you being all that you can be. If you are not all that you can be, the universe doesn't get to be all that it can be. Don't cheat the universe. Which is to say, don't cheat the absoluteness of who you are. Life is delicious. Life is beautiful. Life is sweet. Life is divine. You know, sometimes a wonderful beloved that we haven't seen for a very long period of time is coming to see us. It may be years and years and years since we've seen them. And they're coming to see us. Maybe they're not coming for a whole month. And our heart is leaping in the flames of gratitude and anticipation. So even before they actually get there, we are so on fire with the fact that they're coming that we are in the experience of them being with us even before they physically show up in the body. Ever, ever had that experience? Yeah. Okay, what if we applied the same principle to the blessings that we want? What if we allowed ourselves to get just as excited about those blessings as we were excited about that beloved that we knew were coming? And when we make that agreement that they're coming, and they know that we're expecting them, oh my God, if something got in their way, they would do everything they could do to get it out of the way. Because they, they don't want to disappoint you because you are expecting them. Now, if you weren't expecting them, they may say, oh, I think I'll see her next time. She wasn't expecting me. And I'll see him next time. He wasn't expecting me. So that's how blessings are. If you are not in the sacred expectation of your blessings, then they may say, oh, I think I'll see him or her next time. They're not expecting me. Expectation is the measuring rod of manifestation. As long as it is the expectation of inspiration and not the expectation of desperation. Some people say, oh, it's not good to have expectations. But I see expectations as having an alignment with intention. If God, God is absolute, did not expect to create a universe, I don't think we'd be here. So there is something sacred about expectations as they align with intention. And as they are the resonance of the expectation of inspiration and not the expectation of desperation. You know, when you're desperate for something, you can't get it. It's not coming. Because when you're in that state of desperation, all of your attention is on the absence of the reality that you'd really like to have. So whatever it is that you'd like to have, then keep your attention focused upon it unswervingly. You feel faith in advance. Hopes and wishes are incomplete without drawing power expectancy. Hopes and wishes may become deceased the firm hold on life expectancy keeps. Fear is a one-way ticket to hell. Doubt is the quicksand wherein the fool fell. Worry is a leech that will siphon your might, cripple your soul, and blind your sight. If it is your goal to be raised on high, remove that cataract from your mind's eye. See what is needed that your prayer might be healed. See it as though you've already succeeded. Expectation, measuring rod of manifestation. <coughs> so allow yourself to begin to get excited about whatever it is that you want to come into your life. You know, because we're riding the bliss wave all the way to the cosmogasm. <coughs> To allow the cosmogasm to pour out the baptism upon the sacred orgasm. To give birth to everything 
that we want to be, do, and have. Smile with me. Let's flood this room with some endorphins. Smile the smile of the most glorious orgasm you ever had. <laughs> oh my God, I even got sexual now. <laughs> it's time to be demystify sexuality. We've all earned our incarnation through that. If it wasn't for the juice of our parents, we couldn't be here. So another powerful resonance with femifestation is erotic innocence. In the realm of femifestation, there is no sexual shame. There is no erotic shame. There is only erotic innocence. And when we are in alignment with erotic innocence, we become powerful creators because we got divine alignment with the juice. That's called alignment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get alone, you know? We need to be aligned, but we got to have some alignment too. <laughs> so take back your juice and meditate on erotic innocence. If there is something, and even if you have experienced abuse, I, as a little child, experienced being sexually abused, and I wouldn't trade it for anything, and I know also that at some level of my being, I chose that, even before I came into this lifetime. So I don't wage war against the one that did that to me. Because if I didn't have the need, they couldn't do the dirty deed. So on one hand, they were hurting me, but on a much more important level, they were working for me because I was the one that needed to learn and grow through that. So a lot of us have experienced that kind of abuse. And sometimes we are so hateful toward the perpetrator, but it's something so much bigger than that. And that is that we chose to learn and grow through that. So if you want your energy back, then you're gonna to have to forgive. If you don't forgive the past, you can't trust the present and you then attract the future untrustworthy and unpleasant. See, so you want to forgive. Forgiveness is the resonance of your own empowerment. When you forgive, you open the door to your empowerment. The forgiveness is not so much a gift unto that person that hurt you. The forgiveness is a gift unto yourself that brings you into the resonance of liberation. So take your power back. On behalf of any man, woman, being, thing, or child that ever hurt you in any lifetime, I, as representative of every man, woman, being, thing, and child, apologize to you. By the grace of God, Goddess, and the whole universe, our being, we give back to you any power any energy ever falsely taken from you by any man, woman, being, thing, or child in any lifetime. And we hold sacred space for you to take back any energy, any power you ever falsely gave away to any man, woman, being, thing, or child in any life, calling back all of your fragments and soul pieces for your wholeness, for your ascension, and for your passionate expression of forgiveness. We're going to now bring in the resonance of the birth of the universe. The moment that the universe was created, the love, the wisdom, and the joy, and the bliss that God, God is absolute, felt upon the creation of this universe. And also be of the intention to take back all of your straight energies, any of the unforgivingness that you've engaged in, bring it back. Also, 
You want to tap into all of the different places that you've lived. You know, people move from different places and they take all of their material belongings and leave all of their energetic belongings. That's why when you move into a new space, you got to do so much smudging and clearing because everybody's left their energetic belongings there. You know, some, we all do. When I move, I, I put all that energy, I call it a, as a ritualistic gesture into all my crystals and carry it forward, clear the new space, and then unleash it in the new space and feel instantly at home. So I want you to be of the intention to call home any stray energies that you've left in any of the places that you've lived, because that's your energy that you want to have. So we use a didgeridoo to bring this in. From the circle of breath at the head of the tunnel, you hear the light at the end of the tunnel, didgeridoo, primordial sound of creation, sounding the breath of infinite being, hurling through eternity, waking up the universe in our body, mind, heart, and soul, activating our first eye, calling us home and making us whole. And that thing in the center of your forehead, forehead is incidentally your first eye, not your third eye, just for rectification. It's not that it's wrong to call it the third eye, but if you want the deepest relationship with it and access to it, then its true name is first eye. We are riding the bliss way 
on the way to the cosmogasm. To allow the cosmogasm to pour out the baptism upon the sacred orgasm to give birth to everything that we want to be, do, and have. Thank you so much, beloveds, for attending. I think my time is, uh, I just want to you know, give you a quick commercial here. I'll be sure to check me out on YouTube. I have a number of videos on there. About 73 at this point, more than half of me, so you can find some really inspirational stuff on there. I will do a few more sound healings back at my booth. I'm located in Los Angeles, California, and I uh, am available for sound healings. Psychic astrology, also, that's actually my oldest modality. I don't do that at the shows anymore, but uh, privately. I put all my sessions on a CD so you take it with you word for word, be it information or the frequency of sound. And I also practice and teach red people. So remember to be loving on yourself. You are such a beautiful and wonderful being. And your inner child is counting on you to own the resonance of who you really are. So acknowledge yourself. Self-validation is the salary that you pay for doing your life. And so as I take my leave of you, we intend together that this presentation reaches out to empower every other presentation in the whole universe and to in turn be empowered by every other presentation in the whole universe. Whereas the oneness, there is the oneness of the wholeness of presentations, the oneness of the wholeness of love. See, not just the oneness of wholeness of being, but the oneness of wholeness of everything. The oneness of wholeness of peace, the oneness of wholeness of the orgasm. <laughs> and the cosmogasm is the oneness of the wholeness. Up at the top of the room for all, it's just the bottom that's crowded, y'all. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, I was in the chat.